So we know enzymes are linked together into pathways. How does this help us figure out what a gene is or what a gene does? So the key insight here is that the instructions to make enzymes are encoded in DNA. And that changes in this DNA can result in changes to enzyme activity. And so we call this kind of work forward genetics, which is to say that we make mutations and then we ask how those mutations change the characteristic of the organism that we're interested in. So let's take, for example, the biosynthesis of some important amino acid, right? In some organism, we know that that amino acid has as some of its precursor molecules somewhere in the pathway that make it some intermediates P, Q, and R. And so based on some, say, biochemical analyses that we've done, we know that P and Q and R are involved in making this amino acid, but we don't know the order of the pathway how P, Q, and R fit together. And so we can start this process by making mutants. And I might do this by exposing the organism to ultraviolet light, for example, or some mutagenic, uh, some mutagenic chemical. And then we'll look for strains of this organism that can't make this amino acid. Right, so screen for mutants. And if we find one, if we find one that can't make this amino acid, then we know that one of the enzymes in the pathway that makes this amino acid can't, it must be broken. And so next we can actually determine the order of this pathway by feeding this organism intermediates from this pathway. And so here's a, a concrete example. Let's say I've got mutant one. And mutant one survives if I feed it the amino acid, but it also survives if I feed it P or, um, I'm sorry, Oh, survives only if I feed it R. And now let's say I characterize another mutant. And this other mutant survives if I feed it P or R. And so, given this information, there is only one order of the intermediates in this pathway that will give me a mutant that only survives on R, but not on P or Q, and a mutant that survives on P or R, but not on Q. And so that pathway has to be Q to P to R, to the amino acid. And I know that mutant one, because it survives if I feed it R, but it doesn't survive if I feed it P or Q, mutant one must be busted here. And similarly, because mutant two survives if I feed it P or if I feed it R, then mutant two must be busted in this step here. And so, this seems fairly straightforward, but there's actually a wrinkle because the biochemistry that we are doing to determine these intermediates isn't perfect. And so I might know that P is in this pathway. I might know that it comes before R, but there may actually be another intermediate in here that I'm not finding, which means there may be more than one gene here. There may be more than one enzyme required to convert P 
into R. And so we can begin to tease this apart by making multiple mutants, more than just the couple that I've shown here, and performing what's called a complementation test. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.